Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago, I purchased a very old and quite famous wooden sailboat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. This episode is about a few different things, but mostly the construction of the mast, which has been going on for some time at the other end of town. Uh, and one of the first things I did when I recently got back from the UK was drive over there to have a look. So we're now just driving through Port Townsend to the Maritime Centre, which is where uh, Robert Darcy and Doug and Chris and others have been working on Tally Ho Spas. So I'm just going to go and see uh, how they've been getting on while I've been away. Okay, hello, um, I'm Robert Darcy of Robert Darcy Marine Services, and uh, we're here building the spars for Tally Ho. And I wanted to describe the steps that we, we uh, try to accomplish to get a spar out. And you may have seen the big pile of lumber that was dropped off uh, at the shop. That lumber is sorted and graded for various uh, parts of the project. And the first thing we do is run the chosen lumber through the planer to thickness. And then once we're at thickness, we establish a straight line and we saw that timber out using a large skill saw set on 22 and a half degrees. can then bring to the table saw and set up for cutting what we call side A, which is through the saw, very clean rip that's ready for glue with just a little touch up. After we have everything with a, an A and a B side, we then set the saw one more time and we run the A side against the fence and we develop two A sides at maximum dimension of the spar. So the milling of the timbers for the mast is looking really great so far. We're going to head back over there really soon, see more progress uh, and talk more about spa construction and so on. Uh, but right now I'm back at the boat, uh, going to catch up with Nick who's back from his winter break, see what he's working on. Hey Nick. Hey Leo. How's it going? It's going well. Did you have a nice break? Uh, stressful. <laughs> Why? Uh, I sold my house. I got rid of all my stuff and moved across country. To? To here. To work on the boat. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. It's good. It's good to be back. I actually just mocked up the, uh, the cabinetry for the vanity here. Um, so yeah, so just getting rough estimates here so we can get the uh, materials prepped and ready to go. So uh, there's going to be a second cabinet here, uh, so getting the main kind of framing components for that ready to go. Um, side, the bulkhead here is put in. Um, just kind of trying to map everything out as best as possible so that when I do build all this, everything goes together, square, level, how it should be. Great. It's looking good. Cool. 
Then it, tell me, do you like watching the news? Uh, sure, okay. Leo. Cool, good to know. So as you can probably imagine, costs on this project have been going up and up. Uh, and actually my Patreon income has been going steadily down for some time now. So I'm really happy to say that this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. <sighs> After a hard day's boat building, I love to sit back and watch my favorite TV shows. Unfortunately, some of the best ones like the local British TV news shows are actually restricted here in the USA. Good evening, I'm Skip Saltzwater. And I'm Vicky Cumble Bumble with BBC 7 News. Surfshark VPN is a program that encrypts all your online activity and also lets you set the virtual location. So for instance, I could click on London uh, and then watch my favorite British shows that are normally blocked. In ongoing labor news, yet another union has gone on strike. This time, the Seagulls. More with field reporter Nigel Honeybutt. <laughs> Nigel? There's no Seagulls. Using Surfshark VPN to encrypt your data also helps to keep you safe and private. Anyone nefariously snooping on your connection will be unable to see what you're doing. Use my special offer code TALLYHO for 83% off and three extra months for free. For, for three. For three. For three. For free. For free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a 30 day money back guarantee. And finally, the weather. It's bloody raining. <laughs> Well, I do actually use Surfshark VPN anytime I'm trying to watch something from the UK. So big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this ad and a huge thanks to the amazing team here for their top quality news reporting. You building a fort over there, George? Yeah, somewhere to hide from you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a... Castellated fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, th these are all gonna get cut flat. Oh, really? That'll spoil the effect. <laughs> uh, what, what's going on top of this? And what, uh, what is it? Some couch cushions eventually. This is the settee for the uh, saloon area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So th these are like, this is what your heels are gonna knock up against when you're sitting up here on the, on the bench eventually. Uh -huh. And uh, are you notching all those around the, the frames? Is that going well? Not all of them, just the latter ones, but there will be sole here that's going to cover all these. So these ones don't, but then yes, these these uh, forward ones I have been. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. I'm getting good at it. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about the construction of spars. Uh, Tally Ho's mast being the largest of her spars, a spar simply being a wooden pole or a stick. And there's lots of ways of making spars and there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way. A lot of spars are grown spars and what that means is basically it's a tree trunk uh, which is simply shaped to the shape of a spar. Of course that's one of the quickest and easiest ways of making a spar. Masts and spars like this are very common, there's nothing at all wrong with them, uh, but they do have some disadvantages, uh, namely they're a little bit heavier, uh, not quite as strong generally as a built spar, uh, and also they are prone to checking uh, where the wood will split. And that's especially problematic if it's a horizontal spar like a boom or a bowsprit. Uh, not so bad on a vertical spar like a mast because water tends to just run out of the checks. Now in terms of built spars or uh, engineered spars or glued up spars, however you want to call it, uh, those are spars which are made of uh, various different pieces of wood that have been glued together. Um, and of course that's more time consuming uh, and they can be prone to glue failure if done incorrectly. Um, but the advantage is that there's no heart in there, that's the centre of the tree, the pith, and a piece of wood with heart centre in it usually results in the checking. With a glued up spar you can also maximise the strength of the spar by orientating the grain uh, so that it runs in its most effective direction. Uh, and of course you can also make the spar hollow if you want. Because all the strength of a spar or any pole is around the outside, the centre part is really not doing anything and it can be removed to save weight. So in fact, a hollow glued up spar is uh, usually lighter and stronger than a grown spar.
Now Tallyho's original mast probably would have been a grown mast that is a solid tree uh, but we decided to glue up the mast and the other spars so having decided to do that we have to then work out what sort of construction we're going to use because there's several different types. The simplest would be a stacked construction with several big slabs of timber just glued together. That's very easy, uh, it wouldn't result in a hollow spar and because of the size of the timbers you might be more likely to see a bit more movement and they could be a bit more prone to glue failure. The next one would be a box construction which is quite literally uh, a box that would be hollow uh, and is again relatively simple to machine and to clamp up and so you can get quite effective glue joints like that but again you have quite large pieces on two of the faces and so it's difficult to get the grain orientation really nice. With a box section mask you'd shape it afterwards to be round and you may insert triangle pieces on the inside to uh, retain a good wall thickness throughout. The next style of construction would be a barrel staved or a coopered construction uh, which is like how you would make a barrel, eight pieces with mitered corners joined together to form an octagon and then shaped to be round later on. A barrel stave construction when glued properly is a really good uh, construction method and because you can orientate the grain uh, to be in its most effective position it can make a really really strong mast. The next style of construction is a bird's mouth construction which again has eight pieces and each one keys or notches into its neighbour. Again this means you can orientate the grain to make the spar really really strong. It's a very good construction method uh, and the way that the pieces key together or indexed together uh, can make it quite easy to align them and glue it up in one go. We eventually decided to go with a barrel stave construction. Uh, that and the bird's mouth construction are very similar in strength. The indexing feature of the bird's mouth doesn't actually add any strength, it just makes it easy to assemble with smaller spars. But with larger spars it can actually make it a bit harder uh, and we decided that it would be a little less machining and a little easier to move around these big heavy pieces with a barrel stave construction. So that's what we're going for. The glue that we chose for the mast uh, was West Systems Epoxy. West Systems have a really good tech helpline um, and they were really helpful in uh, helping to choose the exact product and how to apply it. We've also got Russell Brown, our local epoxy wizard, helping us making sure that everything is measured out and mixed correctly because uh, you really have to get that right with epoxy. Now the main mast or the lower mast is not the full height of the rig but it's still pretty tall, pretty long. 
Um, so each stave is not going to be one full length piece of wood. They're going to have to be joined together and they're going to be joined uh, with a very long scarf joint and those scarfs are going to be staggered so at no one point in the mast will there be multiple scarf joints that will all be staggered out into different positions um, the same way that we stagger the butts in the planking or any other joints in something structural like this. Hey Joe, how's it going? Good Leo, how are you? Very good. This is the domestic water system. So yeah, I, used, I decided to use two smaller pumps in parallel for a little redundancy and then I also thought it'd be nice for you when you're offshore if you want to try and conserve water you can just shut one pump off and the flow will be halved and uh, yeah seems like kind of a cool way to go there nice high quality Marco pumps a little the cutest little pressure accumulator in the world <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're, the stuff that I was putting together on my bench, we're just kind of dry fitting it in this locker. So yeah, we got our accumulator here, two isolation valves so that if you need to isolate one pump because it fails, you have a little built-in redundancy there. And we have the inlet strainer to protect the Teflon gears on the pumps. Uh, and then we got water in, water out. Voila. Nice. Yeah, so if you're on a water budget, you're offshore and you're worried about your water maker, you just shut off one pump and you cut your flow in half. So I think it's eight GPM with both pumps, which is adequate for the fixtures on board. Uh, should make a pretty decent shower. And then, yeah, if you want to just uh, cut down on people's usage, you can just simply shut one off. So on the water tank here, we have the same thing. I had a choice of whether to make, bring everything out and make a manifold or whether to do the valving at the source. I decided to do the valving at the source. It's a little less convenient but it's uh, safer and uh, Leo understands it all easy so it seemed like the way to go and we got the water maker in to the tanks here and you can select either tanks for the water maker and the only and we have the main water supply coming out of two tanks and then at the very bottom we have another water out for a hand pump just for ultimate redundancy so if all this stuff uh, craps out then you can always at least get enough water to carry on so, perfect yep. looking great joe yeah i'm super thrilled and happy birthday <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> So once the scarfs are all cut, the scarfs are then glued together and we end up with eight staves that are going to be joined together to make a round spar. And the first thing that will happen once all the staves are tuned up is we cut a taper in them. Each one gets a taper as the spar dimension diminishes towards the top. Those staves are tapered to accomplish this. And then once that happens, we take one, uh, two staves and we join them together and glue them up in a jig to make a quarter. Then once all the quarters are made, we will take two quarters and put them together and make a half. We duplicate that twice, so now we have two halves, kind of like when you cut an avocado. And then we'll put the internals in, compression tubes, any interior blocking, conduit for wiring, whichever. And then we glue the two halves together, and then we have a tapered mast that's eight-sided. And from there, we go to 16 sides, then 
there are two sides and then eventually round. And that's basically the process. So at this point in the process, each hemisphere of the mast has been glued together, but the two hemispheres are still separate. Um, now the mast is going to be hollow, but it's not going to be hollow the entire length. There's going to be blocking near the bottom of the mast and near the top to make it solid in those areas. Uh, for instance, where it goes through the deck and has the gooseneck, there's no need to save weight there and it's nice to have a little extra compression strength. Conduit is also installed in the hollow section of the mast. Uh, inside the boat, uh, that conduit will come up below the sole and then in the rig it'll come up near the spreaders and that will take wires for navigational lights, VHF antennas, uh, radar, that sort of thing. Now the inside of the mast will be epoxy sealed uh, to make sure that any condensation or water in there will not penetrate into the wood and there'll be a drain channel machined into the very bottom of the mast through the blocking so uh, again any water in there will drain out the very bottom of the mast. Finally, we're going to glue a radar reflector inside the mast near the top. And our radar reflector is a device uh, which increases uh, a vessel's radar footprint when viewed on uh, the radar displays of other vessels. So this one is basically a bunch of bits of metal inside a plastic tube. Um, and the idea is that you get that up high uh, and that will reflect radar signals back to the radar and make you more visible. Now this is only a small one, it's not going to be terribly effective, but um, there's no reason not to glue it inside the mast. It may help with uh, our radar visibility. So let's head back over to the Maritime Centre and see the final glue up of the two halves of the main mast. While it's really, really exciting to see the mast fully glued up, the guys down there have been doing a fantastic job and I think it's gonna be a really strong and beautiful spa. Next, they're actually going to be constructing the other spars before they fully finish the mast uh, because we want to get the boom and the gaff constructed so the sail makers can check their flexibility uh, before finalizing the designs for the sails and actually uh, starting to make them. Eventually though, of course, that main mast will be made round through most of its length and have lots of extra details added to it and be beautifully varnished. 
So big thanks to Robert and the team down at the Maritime Centre for such beautiful, meticulous work. Big thanks to the team here. Thanks for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. That's right, Skip. You'll notice very few seagulls here today. Sir, sir, do you have a moment to speak to BBC 7 News? Uh, I guess they didn't want to speak to us today.